Hi crafty friends, it's Amy from the Crazy Craft Lady. Dollar Tree has some really incredible finds for fall out right now, so I decided to make three new fall crafts for you all. The thing about Dollar Tree items is that they're super cute, but they're not always exactly my style. But with a little bit of imagination and some chalk paint, you can usually completely transform the look. So that's what I did today. I whipped up a cute fall centerpiece, a thankful wood sign, and a pumpkin spice picture frame. Let's get making. My first dollar store project is a farmhouse style centerpiece. I started with five Dollar Tree items, two little thankful signs with super cute buffalo check on the sides, a mason jar, foam pumpkin, and a standing pumpkin sign. Everything will either be painted over or co covered in fabric. Start with your standing pumpkin sign since this will take the longest to dry. Remove the bow and the decorative mini pumpkin. The hot glue gave me a bit of trouble, but I wasn't that worried since this side is actually going to be the back. Remove the sticker from the smooth side, then cover everything with a coat of black chalkboard paint. Let dry and then add another coat. I also painted the texture side so my centerpiece would look nice from all angles, but this part did take a bit longer to dry. Feel free to give it a blast on low heat with your blow dryer to speed up the process. The chalkboard paint had completely dried, I grabbed a piece of chalk to lightly season my board and add a little written message. Now it's time to make the base of my centerpiece. I decided to use these two little signs put together, leaving the buffalo check sides to show. I used both E6000 glue and hot glue to join the two signs together. The hot glue holds right away so I didn't have to wait for the E6000 to dry overnight. I taped off the sides to protect the buffalo check pattern. Then I painted the tops of the signs with two coats of green chalk paint. Here I used inexpensive craft store brand chalk paint in the color Forest. You can choose whatever green you like. I just really love using green in my fall crafts. After two coats of green paint had dried, I used just a bit of black chalk paint on a very dry brush to distress the green just a bit. Next was my mason jar. I gave it a good cleaning with rubbing alcohol, then grabbed my light green chalk paint. I used the colors Revive and Carbon from Deco Art. The Revive is the softest shade of green for the jar, and Carbon is a soft black that I used to paint the jar ring. I ended up giving both the jar and the ring two coats of chalk paint and then let it dry completely. Once the paint was dry, I lightly distressed the jar with some sandpaper, which also came from the dollar store. I added the black jar ring and filled the jar with some basic greenery. This sprig came from Hobby Lobby a few years back, I believe. I always keep a tub of basic faux greenery on hand that I buy at the end of season clearance for projects just like this. Finally, the foam pumpkin got a completely new look since the orange really wasn't my style. Start by removing the flowers and stem on top of the pumpkins. Then use some pointed scissors to cut a hole in the pumpkin top. You'll want to cut a fairly large hole in the top, but the size will largely depend on the thickness of your fabric. Since I used a thicker drop cloth fabric, I cut a larger hole than I would have if I just used a fat quarter or other quilting fabric. I always keep burlap and drop cloth scraps on hand, so for this pumpkin I grabbed some scrap drop cloth, I cut a square of fabric, then started to tuck it into the hole in the top of the foam pumpkin. Make sure that the folds of the fabric lay nicely and are evenly spaced around the pumpkin.
I replaced the dollar store stem and flowers with a twig from my yard and a spare sprig from my mason jar. Then I put everything together, the base, chalkboard, mason jar, and cloth pumpkin. I absolutely love how my new centerpiece looks on our kitchen table. This project involves a kid's tumbling tower game, which is just like a mini Jenga game. You'll also need a metal or wooden word. My metal word came from a three pack from Dollar Tree this year. The first two I used on the Dollar Tree picket sign, so I had one left over for this project. Pieces are so versatile. Grab some wood glue and hot glue. Hot glue alone won't be strong enough to hold these wooden pieces together, but I didn't want to wait for the wood glue to dry. Place two small dabs of wood glue on either side of a wooden piece. Then add a dab of hot glue in the middle. Use firm pressure to secure the two pieces together. Repeat this process so that you have three wood pieces secured together. Keep gluing pieces together until you have 10 sets of three. Once you have your 10 sets, it's time to glue them together to form your sign back. Alternate the direction of the pieces each time you, to add a bit of visual interest. Once that is done, it was time to add my metal word. I found these little Velcro adhesive dots at the Dollar Tree, so I cut them into thirds and used them to secure the metal wood to the wood sign. I really like the way that this looks because the words stick out from the wood a bit, giving the sign some 3D interest. So with three $1 items, I have a fun new sign to add to a gallery wall or maybe include in my Thanksgiving tablescape or centerpiece. My last project includes a $1 Dollar Tree item and a little bit of craft paint. This cute little coffee cup shaped picture holder actually wasn't a seasonal item. I found it in back with the picture frames. With a bit of paint though, I felt confident I could give it a fall vibe. First, I used a mini screwdriver to remove the picture clip. Then I peeled away the paper on top of the picture holder. I wasn't confident that I could paint over the paper without it bubbling and warping, so I peeled away the paper as best I could, then I gave the whole thing a good sanding. I used DecoArt chalk paint in lace and rustic. I really like the lace chalk paint since it's not a stark white, but also not yellowish at all. For the green, I just grabbed some off-brand craft store acrylic paint in Forest. Cover the whole cup in a coat of white paint and then let dry. Then use the brown chalk paint to paint on the coffee collar. I also mixed a tiny bit of brown paint with the white to add a little depth at the top for a lid and the bottom for a little shadow. I typed up the words pumpkin spice season on my computer and printed them out. Then I used a pencil and pen to transfer the words onto my coffee cup. You just scribble on the back of the paper with a pencil, 
then trace over the words with pen to transfer a pencil outline to the coffee cup. If you have a Cricut or Silhouette machine, you could easily do this with vinyl as well. I used my dark green paint to carefully paint over my pencil letters. Then I added the photo clip back, but I wasn't quite happy with this project. I decided to paint a tiny green pumpkin. It's really easy. Just paint a C shape over and over until you have a pumpkin shape. Then add a little bit of darker paint to highlight and some dark taupe paint for a little stem. I love how my pumpkin spice picture holder looks on my kitchen shelf with an adorable photo of my twins at a pumpkin patch from a few years ago. This would also be a fun frame to display with your desk at work. So there you have it, three new farmhouse inspired Dollar Tree crafts for fall. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit the like button or subscribe below and happy making. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.